Hello, everyone, everywhere. This is Pastor Robert Thibodeau. I want to thank you for joining us today on the Kingdom Crossroads podcast. You know, every time we get together, I know you receive a huge blessing from the guests, as I do also. Now, today, I have a special treat for you. As you're aware, or you wouldn't be listening to me right now, I split my time between managing our online radio station, Evangelism Radio, and, and balancing the responsibilities of this podcast. And in the process of time, always looking to improve. And I came across this hosting platform of all platforms, basically what I call the mother of all podcasting platforms. And I guess you could say uh, it would be called that. It's podcast websites. And this was tied into Podcasters Paradise and, of course, the John Lee Dumas of EO Fire fame. Now, Mark Asquith started off in his regular nine-to-five shuffle job, as most of us do, but he soon grew tired or bored of that and started his own business, pouring himself completely into building that business and soon experienced what burnout was all about. And I'll let him get into the details of that, but suffice to say, he teamed up with John Lee Dumas and formed podcast websites and it's grown from there. And he also formed Rebel Based Media, which we'll be discussing today. And his own personal brand, Excellence Expected, which is now known by another name, which I'll let him tell you about that as well. He also helps others get through those tough first few years of owning their own business. And Mark is also a keynote speaker, a TEDx speaker, a podcaster, a coach, a mentor. The list could go on and on. Suffice to say, Mark is probably one of the most experienced podcast marketers that I have had the privilege of meeting. I met Mark at the Podcast Movement Convention in Philadelphia in July 2018, and, and he's agreed to come on our podcast today and share with us. Now, help me welcome to the program, coming to us all the way from the United Kingdom, Mark Asquith. Mark, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us today. Well, thank you for having me, sir. It's a pleasure. Always a pleasure to be around. Amen. Now, the first question, Mark, I always ask each and every guest is just tell us in your own words, who is Mark Asquith? Well, I'm just a bit of a geek, really, Robert. I just, uh, you know, I do my thing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm just some kind of podcast tech geek at the minute. That seems to be where I spend all my time, as you mentioned in the, uh, in the, in the kind words that you mentioned in the introduction. So I'm, 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 I'm over here in the UK and I own a number of businesses in, in the podcasting space and then my own personal brand out of the podcasting space um, and spend my time generally helping podcasters, you know, to, to, hey, to, to start their show and to build their, 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 their brand into becoming an audio influencer. You know, I'm a big believer in we podcasters rapidly become audio influencers if we, if we uh, give ourselves the, the ability to grow like that. So that's what I do really. You know, that's how I spend my time. That's what I, that's what I, I, I <laughs> generally finding myself doing it's uh yeah it's it's it always makes for a busy day yes it does now the first question just to lay a little bit of background tell us about your first business venture when you quit your nine to five job and tell us how that burned you out and what you learned from going through all that yeah so that that's a while ago now i was i was running a design and brand agency so right now i'm, I'm the owner of podcast websites i'm the owner of Captivate FM, which is a hosting platform for podcasters. I'm the, the owner of Rebel Base Media um, and my own personal brand stuff. But none of that existed. Um, I want to say five years ago, um, you know, I, I was running a design and brand agency. I was, I was running a, an agency called Hacksaw here in the north of England. And we did really interesting kind of brand and digital work. We'd work for people like Bosch and for Adobe and we'd, we'd design covers for Fortune magazine and, and all sorts of things like that. You know, it was really interesting work. But I, I found that, um, you know, that was the first thing that I went into after I quit my nine to five. And that led me to this massive burnout because I didn't realize that there's, there is something genuinely true about the whole work smarter, not harder um, <laughs> cliche. And it was, it was just something that was, that was interesting to me when I found myself just wondering, like, why do I feel bad about, about working so much? Why am I not getting the results that I should be getting? Because the hours are going up and the hours are going up, but nothing's changing. Um, why, am I, why am I simultaneously liking what I'm doing, but at the same time, absolutely detesting what I'm doing? Um, and that was the burnout. Yeah. You know, that was the, and the physical kind of the, 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 the lower mood, almost a depression sets yeah. in. Um, and that, yeah, so that was, that was that very odd experience and it's, it's difficult to catch that, you know, you've got to, you've got to really be mindful of it and, and be aware of it. Yeah. Amen. And I kind of like it at being married, you know, some days are really great. <laughs> 
and then we won't talk about the rest. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's called ups and downs. That's what they tell me. <laughs> anyway, uh, how has everything you've done since then involving branding, marketing, promotion, that's, you're still in, in that niche, uh, but what have you learned as far as how to manage your time and all that uh, since the first experience? Well, it's a difficult thing. You asked me before we, we jumped onto the recording, like how, how do you manage so many things? And actually, I don't really. Like I said, I own, I own a podcast tech company, which owns in turn a number of other companies. So Rebel Base Media owns Podcast Design Studio, owns our recording studio for podcasters, owns Podcast Success Academy. Um, and uh, there's something else that I should probably, oh, productivity, of course. Um, then I own Captivate.fm, which is a separate company, but essentially the same kind of team. And then podcast websites is the same team. And my own personal brand, Excellent Expector, which is now becoming markasquith.com. Um, like it sounds like a lot, but actually, if you think about it in a slightly different context, it's not, it's not that difficult. So the reason that I say that is that markasquith.com, my personal brand. So you obviously, Robert, you're a, you're a, a denizen and a, a welcome visitor to my, to my free coaching on a Friday, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. You know, that's actually just me under my Mark Asquith brand teaching you like what's going on behind the scenes at rebel base media or at captivate or whatever so this is just me kind of telling stories of what else we're doing yeah. you know so it's, it's sort of easy because it's just i would never be able to go on the rebel base media blog and said you know what the studio has been a nightmare today the soundproofing fell off the wall that didn't happen but I'm just using <laughs> this example soundproofing fell off the wall the microphones didn't work we couldn't get in because we'd lost the keys if i put that under rebel base media everyone's like who's this clown running the studio if i say it <laughs> under markasquith.com i can come to you guys and say look right this company is doing really well but let me tell you, like owner to owner, founder to founder, like, holy, what is, oh, this is crazy. It's just been, this has been insane. What a week. So I, I can say that stuff under my personal brand. So the productivity thing, I think what you've got to do is you've got to make sure that if you're doing several things, um, you should never split your focus. And I think what you should do is you should always be able to tell stories around those things. So if you were creating in some, some sort of podcasting mentoring program, you would be doing so, Robert, because you are running this show and this network and the online radio. It's not like you, you, you're teaching people how to build houses. You know, right, it's, right. it's related. So it, it yeah. all becomes very clear. And, and that's the key thing with productivity. You know, you've got to make sure that what you're doing is the right thing. Um, and I kind of developed a process for this and you'll have heard me talk about it on my free coaching. Um, this is my triple I principle and it's, I've written a book uh, years ago, which is the essential 14 day guide to cutting your working hours and increasing your impact. Um, and it's basically an ebook that allows people to say, right, actually let me quantify my time. And the, the, the biggest lesson that I'd learned and the biggest trick that I'd implemented was something that I call the triple I principle where say if I'm running markasquith.com. And then I'm running Captivate and I'm running um, podcast websites and, and then all the brands under Rebel Base Media. People see those as different brands and they, they are different brands, but to me, it's just one job and right. you do the most important thing at that time. So this month we've been launching Captivate.fm, which is our, our media hosting only component for a, for a podcaster. And that has been the sole focus. So everything else has gone. Yeah. Like we've been dealing with trademark issues through productivity. We've been dealing with patent issues for productivity. None of that's important. Everything has fallen by the wayside so that I can purely focus on the main task, which is build out, captivate. Then when that's done, you move on to the next thing. And that's the big trick is that this triple I principle, whereby you categorize your tasks into important tasks, integral tasks, and interesting tasks. Yeah. All you've got to do is make sure that every day you get the important ones done. Yeah, that's, go. that is it. Um, and it's, most people will try to split the time. And so many people have talked about this, whereby if you've got three tasks, I remember a good friend, Chris Ducker talking about this and it's a very common kind of productivity tip, but if you've got three tasks, task A, task B, task C, what most people do is they'll say, right, Monday, I'm going to work on task A, Tuesday, task B, th uh, Wednesday, task C, rinse and repeat. Sounds logical. You know, you sound like you're multitasking and you're splitting your time. Right. The problem with that is that each of those three tasks, they all take, say, six weeks to complete because you only work one day a week on each of the tasks. So they all take an equitable amount of time to complete. Whereas the better way to do it is just to get task A done in a week. Just get go. that focused and done. And right. then task B done 
in three weeks and then another week on task C. So it becomes, um, you find yourself finishing things. Whereas when you try and become quote unquote productive, it's rare that you do finish things because you're so busy. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, focus on one thing and do it well. You know, uh, my, my big mantra is, you know, it's a ministry of excellence. You know, do whatever it needs to be done, do it right, and make sure it's right, and then move on to the next thing. That is exactly it, yeah. And, and people, people don't do it like that, ultimately. You know, people, people won't think like that. They'll just, people think it's good to be busy, and it's not. It's good, it's good, it's good to deliver right. results. That's the key yeah. difference. Right. Now I want to focus on rebel based media, but I also, before we do that, I want to lay the a little foundation there and talk a little bit about podcast websites. When did you and JLD first come up with the concept of podcast websites? So I, I actually came up with the concept when I first launched my, my, my interview podcast myself, Excellence Expected, the first volume of it years ago now. And uh, I was fortunate just to know how to code and build sites out. You know, I'd always done that. And I thought to myself, well, there's media hosting over there. There's other podcast hosts. Libsyn and Bluebrain, and they're all right, you know, they do what they do. But I want to become an audio brand. I want to be this brand online. This is really difficult for someone that doesn't know how to do this. So I just, I, um, I'd been on EO Fire and I've been on a couple of times now. And I was, um, I just emailed John and I think it was Kate actually. I emailed Kate. I was like, listen, got this idea. There's a, a kid at work here and, you know, used to work for my agency. He's now my co founder and everything we do. So, you know, we can build this product out. It's an all-in-one platform. We'll include media hosting. We'll include managed WordPress, 24-7 support. You know, we'll bring everything together that a, a, an audio brand would need in order to build an online home. Let's just give it a go. So we gave it a go and, and, and did a beta, and it worked, and people like it. Um, so that was kind of how, how podcast websites was formed, you know, and then we got um, – everything else that's spun out of that really. Right. Yeah. I understand. And you know, when I'm asked, you know, why I host our podcast on podcast websites, you know, I, I find it hard to explain to someone who's not really familiar with everything that goes into having a podcast. I mean, they look at, you know, well, you're paying this much money over here, but you know, you can get it for $10 a month over here. Mm -hmm. But what they don't understand is, uh, basically podcast websites is a one-stop shop for podcasting. I mean, there's the website, the hosting, the blog, and, you know, a whole long list of things that I'm not even thinking of right now. But, you know, and I try to explain it. It may be cheaper hosting it elsewhere, but by the time you piecemeal everything together, you're right back where you're at with mm -hmm. podcast websites, but you just have it all in one easy to manage spot. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but is Rebel Base Media uh, how can I say an extension of podcast websites? Is that an accurate description? So it's when we first started podcast websites, we all, I always personally, I always had a vision and then Kieran jumped on board with that vision, which was that, yes, we want a 15 books or a 10 books a month alternative to Libsyn for those people that don't want to pay what podcast websites is because they don't, they only want to do a hobby podcast and they don't want the right. website. They're not yeah. bothered about becoming an audio brand. They just want to record and publish uh, a hobby show. So we've got, right. you know, we always knew that we wanted that. We also always knew that we wanted to extend our academy into a fully fledged membership for people that didn't want podcast websites, but they wanted to learn from our knowledge. So we, we always knew we wanted the academy. Productivity is, a, is an interaction platform that we're working on, and that's a separate thing. Um, and, and the design studio, podcast design studio, we know that podcasters struggle to find good quality design. And we, so we always knew we wanted to put these pieces in place. Podcast websites was just the first product that we could bring to market because it was the, the most immediate need in the industry. Mm -hmm. So the way that it works now is that Rebel Base Media is essentially Kieran and I and the rest of our team. And we, Rebel Base Media owns um, Podcast Design Studio, owns Rebel Base Studios, which is our podcast studio, physical studio in Sheffield, um, owns Podcast Design Studio, owns Podcast Success Academy. And then we've got myself and Kieran who also own Productivity, and we've got JLD, who is a co-founder of Podcast Websites and also involved in Captivate. So we've kind of, even though it's all the same team, we've just expanded the suite of products out. And JLD is involved in, in, in Podcast Websites and Captivate. And Kieran and I are, um, are the sole founders of the other stuff. Um, so that's, that's really the structure. Um, and it, it's so that we can keep bringing products out and, and helping you guys with you know, what you need as a podcaster, really. Okay. So that's how it, correct me if I'm wrong, was Rebel Base Media, that's basically a new launch, right? 
Well, it's sort of an extension, really. Okay. It's, right. it's, it's more of a parent company for everything else that we launch that isn't podcast websites or Captivate. Um, Just put so that we can one umbrella. So. Yeah, pretty much. And for all intents and purposes, you know, the public generally sees Rebel Base Media as owning podcast websites and Captivate in, in you know, strictly paperwork legal terms that is you know they're different legal entities but ultimately it's the same team it's the same people so we are yeah. we we're generally seen as rebel based media is the parent company for everything that we do okay how can someone use rebel based media to build their podcast audience and simplify their podcasting life well, that's the beauty of it now, Robert, is that you can use us for whatever you need. So if you just need a media host, you can come to Rebel Base Media and we'll say we'll point you in the direction of the Captivate platform. If you want to build your audio influence and, and really build an online hub and, and start to blog and start to build a membership site and start to build everything out online underneath your brand, then podcast websites, which comes bundled with Captivate included. Um, if you just want our knowledge, then you can join our podcast successacademy.com. Um, if you want to come into our studio and physically record, so if you're in the UK and you're like, you know what, I want a podcast re post podcasting recording studio, you can physically walk in and record your show with us. Um, and then if you want your cover art for your podcast or you want some ebooks or landing pages or your branding doing, you can use podcast design studio. So you can use you can use any one of these things in 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 their own specific way or you know, you join podcast websites, you get the opportunity to get a discount on your podcast design studio stuff. You get Captivate FM bundled in as your media host in which you'll be going through that transition over the next week as we plug Captivate into your website. Um, and it, it, yeah, you know, we can, we can generally help in any guise that you want, whatever that might Amen. be. Amen. Amen. Now I'm thinking of one of the areas a new podcaster has trouble with is basically finding their own voice or their brand, if you will. How can Rebel Base Media help a new podcaster or business owner or nonprofit leader or whoever build their brand and find their voice in their podcast to help grow their audience? So that's an interesting question. Generally speaking, you know, that's something that we'd point you into the academy for because branding is a very difficult thing. You know, branding most people see as a logo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Color um, but it, yeah, <laughs> color palette and pictures. And it's not. It's it's you're right. It's how you talk. Um, as an example of that, you know, I've been writing the support documentation for Captivate Captivate.fm this week, and there's there's very distinctly us style language in there you know it's sort of a you know one of the questions was how do i import a podcast from libsyn and i you know i'd written it and i was like you know this is pretty sweet all you need to do is click this and you don't get charged for the transfer it's free to migrate in from libsyn that's pretty cool isn't it you know so and i'm writing it in our voice hmm. and that's you know that's our brand is approachable friendly and knowledgeable and and you know podcasters don't often spend any time on that so we spend a lot of time in our academy podcast success academy which is free you can join that for free. And we've got courses in there that help with brand, finding your tone of voice, understanding where your limits are, you know, where do you draw the line against formal and too informal and, and you know, all these kind of things that you've got to understand. Um, so yeah, podcastsuccessacademy.com, that's the ultimate place to go for that. that Absolutely. I've, I've used it on many occasions. <laughs> Good. <laughs> does, and well, the, the best part is you, you think you have this unique problem and you go in there and say, oh, there's a video to talk about it. <laughs> it's like, wow. Yeah, there are no wow. new problems in podcasting. <laughs> amen, amen. Now, I remember I read somewhere uh, that you said, I'm trying to remember exactly here, that the, the design of everything around your podcast matters more than the actual content and attracting listeners. Uh, the brand design, the logo, the interactivity of the website, et cetera is what attracts people to your podcast or your business to begin with, but it's your voice, your story and all of that, that keeps people following you. I know I'm oversimplifying that. Mm -hmm. Will you explain what you meant by that? Yeah. Again, another really good point, Robert. And, and, and the, 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 the crux of what I was getting at there is that your content is the product. That's the thing that people are quote unquote buying, you know, and, and they're buying that by investing their time. Um, so you've got to give them something really high quality back. You know, you've got to give them good stuff back, which is your content and your voice and everything that, everything that is in your podcast has to be top-notch content. Mm -hmm. But how do we choose everything else? By the attractiveness and the appeal of its packaging, whether that's as crass as this sounds, finding a new partner on Tinder. The Tinder quite literally exists 
so that you can make a split second decision based on someone's physical appearance, right or wrong. That's the way that we choose things. Right. So, you know, I will recommend your podcast and you can recommend mine, but if one of your listeners goes to my podcast, sees it, don't, doesn't like the cover because it's not done right. It doesn't look good. They ain't listening because right. they're just not going to make that. They're just going to think, Oh, that's cheap. It's not very good. It's just, keep, how can, how can, excuse me, how can the, the content of this thing be good when it doesn't look like it would be good. Um, yeah. and that's what most people get wrong, you know, is, is that they will, they will generally not do anything at all to, to, to give themselves that head start. You know, you've got to consider now in podcasting, the 600,000 shows in the world, yep. NPR's playing, you've got the BBC playing, you've got the Guardian in the UK, you've got people like David Tennant, Doctor Who, he's got a podcast. And, you know, you've got to think to yourself, all right, these guys will put good budget into making this thing look good. You know, if I'm going to compete next to them in the iTunes categories, because democratically we can do that, then we have to look as good. And, and that's how people decide. It's true. Yeah, that's right. Now, well, tell us a little bit about Excellence Expected. I know you recently rebranded that with your name. Uh, mm -hmm. What is this company all about? I know we hit on it, just touched on it briefly a little bit. But what is Excellence Expected and rebranded MarkAskwith.com? So I was, uh, that, that started because, yeah, that was my first ever solo podcast was Excellence Expected. And it was just, I didn't intend on making podcast websites or making Rebel Base Media when I started this thing. I was just like, I'm going to do a show. I'm going to do a podcast. Because a friend of mine, Gaz Ehrlich, got me into uh, DC Comics podcasts. So we started <laughs> making it. Like, if you can see on the screen behind me, there's like old DC Comics characters in the back and there's a Superman thing there. And there's all sorts of stuff. Um, so I was like a big DC guy. So when I thought to myself, do you know what? I'm going to, because I'm running this design agency as I was back in 2013 when I started my first podcast. I thought, do you know what? I'm just going to create a podcast to talk about my experiences in business, maybe interview some people. Um, and I wanted that to have its own brand. So I created Excellence Expected, which is paraphrased from a Steve Jobs quote, which is not many people are used to working in an environment where excellence is expected. Mm. And, and I thought to myself, do you know what? The reason we beat ourselves up as business people, as entrepreneurs, as small business owners, as founders, is that when we do things wrong or things don't happen the way that we want them to, it's because we expect ourselves to be fantastic. We expect ourselves to achieve excellence. And that's when I came up with the tagline, you know, the more you expect from yourself, the more you'll excel because you do, you keep pushing yourself and hammering yourself and getting better and better. So the more you expect yourself to do that, the, the further you will excel. Um, the challenge with that was that as we started building rebel based media and we started building podcast websites, you know, I, I do little bits of coaching for podcasters underneath my own brand. I'll do my own content. I'll do all sorts of bits under that. Um, it started to get confusing because people were thinking, well, what's rebel based media? What's podcast websites? And then what's this excellence expected thing? Um, so this year I'm making the big shift to moving that to markaskwith.com. So it's just very, very clear all right, look, this is the founder of Rebel Base Media mm -hmm. basically talking about his experiences in founding a business. Yeah. Um, so that's been the goal of that one. Um, okay, and that's where you do your, fr your free Friday training on Facebook Live and all that as well. Right? That's right, yeah, yeah. And the reason that I do that, like I said, Rob, is so that I can say things that I wouldn't be able to say under the Rebel Base Media <laughs> brand. I can say, do you know what, guys? It's been a really bloody hard week. Um, whereas if I say that on the Rebel Base Media blog, everyone's like, why would I trust these guys with my podcast? Because they can't right. even deal with their day. When really, <laughs> we're talking person to person. Same thing. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, as we get ready to close, can you tell us, in your opinion, what's the number one thing a new podcaster usually does wrong and the number one thing they need to watch out for? They spend too much time producing the content and no time at all marketing the content. Each episode should be treated like a product and that product should be marketed to the nth degree. Hmm. Okay. What's an insider secret that you could give our listeners about the one thing that podcasts are, are great at doing, but very few people know about? Um, I, th I think people know this, but I don't think many people fully value it. The great thing that they are amazing for is building your network out. So if you're entering an industry fresh, if you're starting a new ice cream shop local to your house, go and create a podcast or a video series or something that puts you in front of the people that you want to buy your ice cream. You know, so if it's parents and you want to get, want them to bring their kids in, you create quite literally a podcast, which is 
all right, this is me talking to parents about their kid's favorite, favorite flavor and why it's so good. Use it to build the network of people that you want to work with. Yeah, amen. Amen. Mark, I, I truly appreciate uh, you taking time today to come here and visit with us. If someone is interested in beginning a podcast, this is, a, this is one of them softball questions to you. What do you recommend they need to do first? I would go to podcastsuccessacademy.com. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what if they need well, help with their logo and, and cover art? Oh, well, it's funny you should ask that. You can go to <laughs> podcastdesign.studio. Although I will say, Robert, as well, uh, you can do podcastdesign.studio, but I'd also... Like with the hosting, um, we we'll, we'll can put an offer out for you guys as well. So Captivate.fm, we're going to be offering the hosting for the first month for a dollar. So if you want to start a podcast, we'll do your podcast hosting, give you your download stats and everything that you need uh, for a book for your first month. Right. So go and check that out, Captivate.fm. All right. If someone has a question or perhaps they want to do an interview with you such as this, how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, you can just book into my calendar if you want. Actually, just go to rebelbasemedia.io forward slash mark, M-A-R-K, rebelbasemedia.io forward slash mark. And there's a little button that says book an interview. All right. Well, thanks again, Mark, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to, to be with us. Folks, there you have it. Uh, if you want to get some more information, please reach out to Mark. I'll be putting all these links in the show notes as well. And if you want to check out podcast websites, I'll put a link to there in the show notes also. Uh, that is all the time we have for today. Be sure you leave a comment down below, or if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, do me a huge favor and, and leave a comment and a review. That's what helps us grow. And if you leave your Twitter feed in the comment, I'll be sure to personally send you out a thank you note as well. Well, that's all we have. Mark, thank you again for taking the time to join us. I do appreciate you, brother. And for Mark Ask with myself, this is Bob Thibodeau reminding you to be blessed in all that you do.